Welcome to yet another episode of Revisiting Art Supplies from My Childhood, an unofficial series. And let me know in the comments because I'm actually really curious, when was the last time you used one of these double-ended stamp markers? And if you don't know what a double-ended stamp marker is, let me show you. Basically, it is a marker that is, well, it's double-ended. It has a regular fat marker that you would expect from a kid's art supplies on one side, and the other side we have a stamp. So if you can't tell because it's hard to see, this marker has a lip stamp. So when you use this marker, uh, you, you get a lip stamp shape for some reason. Why do these exist? I have no idea, but as an adult, now I start to wonder if they are really useful for scrapbooking or journaling or whatever sort of scheduling you do. I've been having a lot of fun revisiting these silly art supplies where I haven't used them in so, so long. So these silly stamp markers I thought would be really fun to play around with, see if I can't create normal artwork with them. So I'm going to swatch these silly art supplies and then get to doodling and see what sort of fun illustration we can come up with with this interesting and nostalgic art supply. All right, let's start off with our red lips. Oh no, <laughs> I hope they're not dried up. Moving on to our yellow star. I like the yellow star. It's simple, it's bright, it works decently. Next up, ooh, we've got a green. Oh gosh, the green is so juicy, it, it might be too juicy. It's supposed to be a peace sign, but honestly, I also see the Playboy Bunny, so whoops. Next up is our blue, which, ooh, this one works quite well and is actually pretty fun. This time we have a thumbs up, or you know what, I guess it depends on your mood. We could also have a thumbs down. All right, next up we have our question mark. I just can't imagine as a kid, you're like, yeah, I want, mm, I want a question mark and a thumbs up in my art. Speaking of mysterious designs, next up we have, uh, we have a check mark, a brown check mark. And last but not least, we have, <laughs> we have a foot. We can have, well, the only unfortunate thing about making footsteps with this stamp is that it's just the left foot. So you can't really get a nice footprint pattern, but uh, there it is, I suppose. Now, before we move on to sketching, I actually thought it'd be interesting to see if these guys were able to mix with water well so that we could maybe use them with a brush and just, I don't know, use them a little bit more, more artistically. Basically, I just want to play around and see if we are able to use them in a way that they aren't exactly designed for. So add a little bit more water. Okay. Ooh, so this is actually working a lot better than I anticipated. It's very pastel. I think it's really pretty and they seem to blend quite well. But what if I put just a block of color down? and then added water to that. Oh my gosh, it almost works like a watercolor marker. I'm kind of shocked. I'm actually really curious as to what I can create and I feel like that opened up so many possibilities. All right, I am going to get to sketching and see what I can come up with inspired with these bold and bright colors. Let's get into it.
So if it's not obvious at this point, I have been quite obsessed with creating sets of illustrations that are based off of shapes and sometimes really based off of colors. So obviously for the sketches this session, I have a circle, a triangle, and square shape based illustrations. And I just wanted to keep it loose, silly, fun, and really reminiscent of childhood art. So starting off with our circle illustration, I wanted to focus on very round, bubbly, cute characters in a scene. So for whatever reason, I went with a stream side illustration. We've got some cats, which I then later changed to tigers. There's an alligator in the water, some lily pads. And overall, I just wanted to cram a lot of small, round, cute, simple details into this illustration while also just making something that really had the vibe of this art supply. Something innocent and soft yet colorful, but at the same time kind of on the pastel side because once you add water to these markers they create the perfect pastels. Which this video, I don't know why it took me so long to realize, any sort of marker that's water based you can literally turn into a watercolor based supply. So it's kind of a game changer when it comes to working with strange art supplies like this. Not only can you use them as a marker, but you can just simply add water and and pretty much use them any way you want, which kind of seems cheap because I am wanting the focus to be using the markers as is, which I do later on. I just wanted to make sure that I got a base color coat that wasn't so dark and intense right away. Because we do only have 10 colors and as fun as it probably would have been to really embrace those colors, something about those pastels just really won me over, which is very strange because I'm not normally a pastel person, but I just really liked the vibe of these markers. Even at their strongest color, they were kind of toned down a little bit and I really like that. So I really wanted to embrace that sort of innocent, bright, colorful mood in this illustration. So after sort of extracting the ink from these markers into a palette and watering them down and applying a sort of base coat onto this illustration, I went through with just a little bit of shading here and there. I didn't want to add too, too much because I wanted this to be very simple and blocky with really bright, intense colors here and there. But I did want to really push these markers to their limit and just see how many additional colors I could get. So I did have a lot of fun playing around with texture here and there, making some fun choppy gradients. And I gotta say, overall, this illustration has a very earthy yet bright and colorful mood to it. And I was really happy with how it was turning out so far. So after I got my flats and some simple shading here and there, it was time to start using the markers as is. So I really wanted to embrace those big fat lines. So I added some line art here and there just to reinforce some areas that I felt like needed reinforcing with the line art. Adding textures, adding silly little details and extra lines here and there. Winging it by adding some plants in the water. And then it was time to start playing around with the textures of the stamp markers. I'll admit in this video, I didn't maybe use the stamps as much as I should have, but it was really fun to put them here and there in just a really playful, colorful, random way. And I did find a few ways to use them that were really interesting when it came to adding texture. So if I used the tip of the peace signs, just the tip, they looked like little grass marks, so that was perfect. I threw some red lips here and there to maybe represent flowers. I don't know if that actually came through. And lastly, I really embraced the texture of that brown check mark to create these cattail-like play Plants. They're a little messy, but I think for using a stamp marker, this one turned out pretty good. I'm actually really happy with it. It's just, it's so cute and playful and colorful. We're off to a great start. on to our triangle based illustration, I actually wanted to approach this one a little differently than our previous illustration. Our previous illustration, I did a lot of pencil work and sketching to make sure that I had a nice illustration that I wanted. But for our triangle piece, I actually thought I would wing it a little bit. Now granted, there is a lot less detail as far as characters go. This one is very heavily based off of the shape of a triangle. I started off with a mountain just 
very nice cool colored mountain fading from a very nice light blue to a darker blue and then to a purpley blue. Something I found that I loved about these markers was their blues, their greens, and dare I say, adding a little bit of purple to them. The teal that you could get with the green and the blue was just so appealing to me that I wanted to make this illustration very heavily based off of those colors. I think when I originally sketched this illustration, I had more of a summer feel to it with a nice green mountain with green trees. But after playing around with the colors a little bit in our previous illustration, I just fell in love with the teal that I wanted to create a nice winter scene instead. So like I mentioned, we start off with a very basic triangle mountain and then I added a bunch of triangle trees again very basic very simple but I feel like these bold shapes and colors just work so well that I can't help but really like them but I think this illustration needed a little bit more color so I added in a rainbow in the background just because I just really wanted to embrace these art supplies so using all of the colors was definitely something that used all of the art supplies but we did have to use the art supplies as is so we had to get some stain in there so I put some stars in the sky which was cute and fun but we needed more so I used that star bursty blue and added textures to the leaves of the plants and by plants I mean trees after I clustered them in really tightly they really looked like I don't know maple leaves or something and it was the perfect texture for these trees so I thought that was really fun I wanted to make sure that I at least used three stamps in these illustrations because this this video is all about these illustrations being made with these stamp markers. So it kind of felt cheap just watering them down and using them as basically a watercolor. So I made sure I used three stamps. Now in the original sketch, I had some sort of cat creature behind this mountain, but I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to add after I made this wintry scene. So for whatever reason, I created these three black figure horses throughout the illustration and used our foot to create a very mysterious mane to our horses. It almost looks like they are evaporating and they just look very mysterious and almost liquidy. So I really like that mysterious aspect to this illustration. Leaving the white of the page as snow on the ground and around this scene was very subtle but perfect, I think. And then adding very simple brown trees throughout. And there it is, our triangular winter scene. And last but not least, you guessed it, we have our square based illustration. So for this piece, I created this square stone golem guy who is strolling through a meadow of grass and stumbling upon, that's right, a square based house shape thing. I think because these illustrations were created with such a childhood inspired art supply, I really wanted to focus more so than ever on storytelling and creating fun, bright, simple characters and putting them in scenes where there is definitely a story behind them. Telling a story in my art isn't something new, obviously. If you guys are familiar with my work, I love creating backstories to my illustrations and just creating a scene where there is something happening that makes you wonder what is going on. But using an art supply that really brought me back to my childhood just really made me want to get that storytelling aspect really going so I really felt that with this little guy and I couldn't help but think well I say little guy he's a big guy creating this guy I couldn't help but think what he was doing where he came from is he alive is he bewitched what is going on here what is the story is he good is he bad is he going to crush that house maybe he's visiting a friend maybe his best buddy lives in that house maybe it's a tiny pebble boy who <laughs> knows. All I know is that this illustration is it's simple but it's bright and colorful and very bold and I really enjoyed this piece. I don't know something about that little stone guy. I love him. This one I obviously focused a lot on using the markers as a sort of watercolor art supply because well I felt like there was a lot of layering and shadows and things like that that needed to be added to this piece to make it what I wanted but I will say the few times that I did use the markers to fill in a large space of color I actually really enjoyed them. I think because artist grade markers 
markers are used to be layered and get different tones. They can be really frustrating when it comes to putting down a flat of color, but when it comes to these cheap markers, putting down a flat color is so easy. They don't layer, so you're guaranteed a flat wash of color. And they also don't rip up the page, which was amazing. I love an art supply that doesn't destroy your paper. But for this piece in particular, I definitely focused on adding water and layering them, which was fine. When it came to incorporating the stamp aspect of these markers, I kind of repeated what I did in the past. I used the top of our peace sign to create little grass pieces. It just worked so perfect, I couldn't help it, and it just especially looks really good on the moss of our rock creature. I put stars in the sky just because they were kind of a cute detail. And the last detail I tried to do was use the brown check mark as my classic birds in the background. It doesn't look that good, but I thought it was kind of funny, so I had to do it. And there it is. This is our third and final piece using our stamp markers. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these pieces. And I'm curious to know, do you still use these stamp markers? Because I haven't thought about them since my childhood, which was a very long time ago. All right guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Stay golden. But before I go, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for all of their support. You guys are the best. If you want secret sketches, early access to my videos, and more, check out the link to my Patreon in the description. Seriously, thank you guys all so, so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!